Given the triangle with vertices A, 4, negative 1, so right there, B, 5, 6, so right there, and C, 1, 3, given those three points, I need to show that triangle A, B, C is an isosceles and also a right triangle. So this is a proof using coordinate geometry. It's not a two column proof. It's not a flow proof or an indirect proof. I am basically using the information that I have to prove what I need to prove. So it's not going to look like the regular proofs that you're used to doing. So I need to show two things. Thing number one, that this is isosceles. Isosceles means that two sides are congruent. So according to my picture, it looks like these would be my two guys. I also need to show that this is a right triangle. So according to my picture, that's the guy that would look right. So the two things that I need to show are that BC and CA are congruent. Since these are coordinates, I'm going to use the distance formula. The second thing I need to show is that this is a 90 degree angle. So what I'm gonna do is find the slope for BC and the slope for AC and prove that they're perpendicular, okay? And I'm gonna do that again using two main steps. So depending on what type of teacher you have, you may need to restate the given, but I don't have to if I was your teacher. I would just ask you to show what you need to show and explain what you're doing. So I would want you to say something to the effect of, well, number one, and I'm showing this part first, we need to show that BC or CB is equal to AC or CA. Okay, I probably said it backwards at some point, but it all means the same thing. Now this is coordinate geometry. So what we need to do is use the distance formula to find the length of each of these lines. And this is going to be the distance formula. Okay, x sub two minus x sub one squared plus y sub two minus y sub one squared, all of that in a big square root. So it doesn't matter which one, I'll show BC first. So I will explain that BC, I need to find the distance and the distance is a big square root. Okay, let's say that B is our twos and C is our ones. So if I'm doing X sub two minus X sub one, that is an X, so five minus one, so five minus one squared plus six minus three squared. Okay, that's gonna get me four squared, which is a fun game, plus three squared in square root, still in the square root, 16 plus nine, which is the square root of 25, which is five. So the length of BC is five. Now I'm gonna show that AC is five. Or what did I call it? Yep, I called it AC. So AC, the distance is going to use the distance formula again. So uh, let's call you my twos and you my ones. So let's do four minus one squared, four minus one squared plus negative one minus three squared. That's gonna equal three squared plus negative four squared. Three squared is nine. Negative four in parentheses squared is 16, looking familiar. That's gonna equal 25 in a square root. And the square root of 25 is five. Okay, so distance formula out. So I will say, because I almost stopped right there. So I will say, so BC is equal to AC using the distance formula. Might be saying too much. But why not? Why the heck not? This one won't take as long. I could use the slope formula, but I'm just going to say uh, we need to 
show that BC is perpendicular to AC. I have all this space, so I'm going to use it. Uh, slope of BC is, now let's go up here, let's find the slope, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 over 4, and AC is down 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, so negative 3 over 4. The slopes are negative reciprocals, okay, 3 over 4, oh, wait a minute, this is supposed to be 4 over 3, Ugh, almost ruined the whole thing. The slopes are negative reciprocals, so... B, C is perpendicular to A, C. Since B, C is equal to A, C, and uh, what was the other thing? B, C is perpendicular to A, C, Triangle ABC is an isosceles right triangle. Ran out of space there. Okay? Probably could have written out right, but it's too late. <laughs> so there you have it. Kind of a mess. But uh, and I almost screwed things up really badly over there. But that's how it's done. You basically just show whatever math you need to show to make sure that that works. And that's it, we did it. The vertices of quadrilateral KAIT are K, which is 0, 0, A, which is A, 0, I, which is A plus B, C, and T, which is B, C. Use coordinate geometry to prove that quadrilateral KAIT is a parallelogram. Well, there's a, several ways that you could prove something is a parallelogram, but probably the easiest way to do it is to show that you have two opposite sides are congruent. Two pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if I were to imagine um, Ka and It, so that, that's kind of what I have to do. I have to do that. I have to show I have to show two pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So number one, I have to show that Ka is congruent to It. When I'm done that, I have to do Ai and Kt are congruent. Okay, so again, if you're like, I, I don't see it, I don't see the picture. Look, there's, there's a picture, Kai. T, it has to give you whatever order it's in. So I have to show KA and IT, and then I have to show AI and KT. That's what I have to do. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay? So I need to show that KA and IT are congruent. So the way we do that is we use the distance formula. Okay, so let's write out the distance formula down here. The distance formula is x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. All right, so if I were looking at Ka, okay, we'll do this all in separate parts, Ka, I would say that the distance equals uh, let's let u be x sub 2, y sub 2, and let's let u be x sub 1, y sub 1. In fact, I'll write that out just once. I'll do this once, and then I probably won't write it out again because otherwise it'll get sloppy. Um, oh, one, 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 you're supposed to be one. 
All right, x sub 2 minus uh, x sub 1 is going to be a minus 0, a minus 0 squared plus uh, 0 minus 0, which is 0 squared. So let me get rid of this extra. Okay. That gets me a minus 0 squared. Uh, so I need my square root still. I don't know why I got rid of my square root. So square root a minus 0 is just going to be a squared plus 0 squared is just 0. So the square root of a squared is just a. So the distance of ka is just a. All right, I can handle that. So the distance of it has to be a as well. So it distance formula. Okay, let's let u be our twos and u be our ones. So x sub two minus x sub one is gonna be b minus a plus b. B minus, now be careful. If I'm subtracting both A and B, it's going to be A minus B. I know that looks weird, but trust me. Plus C minus C, which is 0, so 0 squared. B minus B cancels out, giving me A squared. Plus 0 is just A squared. And again, the square root of a squared is a. So we did it. So since ka is a and it is a, ka is it. Thing number one, proved. Now, ka is it. Now I need to show ai is kt. So I'm going to say show ai is kt. Uh, ai, artificial intelligence, or Alan Iverson, my second favorite sixer of all time. All right, uh, AI, let's, let's get rid of all this mess up here. I'm looking at AI, so let's let U be the ones and U be the twos. So uh, X sub two is A plus B minus X sub one is A squared plus C minus zero which is just C squared. A minus A cancel out, and that gives me just B squared plus C squared. Now let's not try to simplify that because my goal is to make sure that uh, KT is the same thing. So who cares if it's simplified? Who cares? KT, that distance, big square root. So let's let you be my twos and you be my ones. So I have a feeling this one's gonna be a lot friendlier because of that double zero. B minus zero plus C minus zero is going to be b minus 0, which is b, so b squared. And c minus 0 is c, so c squared. So we just shown, shown, showed that ai is kt, which means kate is a parallelogram. And I believe the name of that theorem is the opposite sides something. I don't know. But since the opposite, two pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it's going to be parallel. And there's a name to that theorem. It's just escaping me because right now I'm recording this at 10.15 p.m. But that's how you do it. We proved it.
All right, coordinate geometry proofs. You just have to do the math. And a lot of times the math is fun because things disappear. That's what happened. Fun, 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 fun. The vertices of quadrilateral coat are C00, zero, zero, so let's just get these down. O, 5, 0, O, A, which is 5, 2, and T, which is 0, 2. Prove that coat is a rectangle. All right, so I have this picture here. Let me use a different color. I have this picture. In order for something to be a rectangle, all right, we need to show two main things. Thing number one, we need to show opposite sides are congruent. And thing number two, we need to show that all four angles are 90 degrees. Okay, now since we have a picture here, and since this is a rectangle and all of the measurements are super nice, we do not need to go crazy whipping out distance formula or we don't have to go crazy whipping out um, slope formula. Okay, what I have to do is I just need to show that TA and CO are congruent. Then I need to show TC and AO are congruent. So let's do that first. Okay, let's do that first. Uh, and I'll say that we need to show that TA equals CO. And we need to show uh, that CT or TC, I think I called it, is equal to AO. Okay, so let's do that. Pretty easy because everything lines up perfectly. TA is one, two, three, four, five units. So TA is five. CO is five. So TA is CO. Okay. If these lines weren't so pretty, I'd have to use the distance formula. I did that in previous videos. So if you want to go back and watch, I beg you. Also, TC is 2. AO, which is what I do when I'm hollering out my friend, that's also 2, which means TC equals AO. So... Uh, opposite sides are congruent. Okay. What I'm going to do to show that these are 90 degree angles is I'm going to say what the slope of TA is, the slope of AO is, the slope of CO is, and the slope of TC is, and prove that all of these guys are parallel to each other because of negative reciprocals. So TA, uh, let's actually word it better, the slope of TA, or let's do this, let's be creative, M TA. That means the slope of TA is zero because it's a perfect horizontal line. The slope of AO, which is what I do when I holler out to my friend, is undefined. The slope of CO is zero. And the slope of TC is undefined. What that means is TA is perpendicular to AO. Uh, AO, which is what I say when I'm hollering out to my friends, is perpendicular to CO. CO is perpendicular to TC. And TC is perpendicular to TA. So all angles are 90 degrees. 
Opposite sides are parallel or are congruent. All angles are 90 degrees. Therefore, coat is a rectangle. All right, so that's coordinate geometry proof. You're just proving what you need to prove to explain yourself. You're not making two columns. You're not flowing uh, unless you're making a wrap out of this, which all of those AOs sure sounded like I was flowing. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe. Triangle art has vertices AB, uh, which is A, R is A plus C, B, and T is A plus C over 2, B plus D. Use coordinate geometry to prove that triangle art is isosceles. So something that is isosceles is going to have two sides that are um, congruent. And since I'm given letters instead of actual things to graph, I have to use the distance formula a bunch of times. So a little reminder that the distance formula is x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared all in a square root. Comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So Let's see if I hit gold. I'm going to see find the difference of a or the distance of AR. I have to find the distance of RT, and then maybe I have to find the distance of AT. And I'm going to say that. I'm going to say, and I don't even, well, yeah, I'm still going to write out my steps. We need to show that two sides are congruent. So I need to find AR, I need to find AT, and I need to find RT, and hopefully the ones that I choose strike gold. So let's start out with AR. Uh, AR is going to give me a distance of big square root. Let's call you my x sub 1s. Let's call you my x sub 2s. So x sub 2 would be a plus c minus my x sub 1, which would be a. Things disappear squared. Plus b minus b. How convenient. 0 squared. Okay. The A's cancel out, so this just becomes C squared plus nothing is just C squared. The square root of that, C. Okay? Okay. Let's try AT. I don't have a good feeling about it at all. AT is going to be D equals probably a bigger square root. Uh, let's do that. Let's let that be my X sub 2, uh, X sub 1. So A plus C over 2 minus A squared plus B plus D minus B. So B plus D minus B squared. Let's bring that root over. You go away. You go away. So that ends up being C squared, C over 2 squared, which is C squared over 4 plus just D squared. Let's leave it like that because it's not going to simplify any further. There's no tricks to find the square root of a sum. So let's leave it like that. Obviously, AR and AT are not the same. So I'm guessing that RT is going to be the same as AT. And if it's not, then it better be the same as AR. Otherwise, I wasted my time. So let's find RT. Retweet. Mm, Twitter, a dying platform. The distance, let's let that again be my twos, that be my ones. 
So you're going to be A plus C over 2 minus, now be careful, I'm subtracting both A and C. So minus A minus C, close that, squared. Uh, plus, 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 I'm going to need more space on this one. B plus D minus B squared. Uh, you go away. you go away. All right. So this is going to be a tricky one. You ready? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I, we'll see. Um, what I have to do with this guy is combine the C over 2 minus C. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this C into 2C over 2 so I can combine like terms. So minus regular C over 2 minus 2C over 2, close it, square it. You just become D squared, so all is well with that one. Okay, now I can combine these fractions. Okay, C minus 2C is negative C. 2 over 2 stays 2. That lives inside of a parentheses squared, and you're still plus d squared. Negative c over 2 times itself is c squared over 4 positive plus d squared. If you're the praying type, you're saying right now, praise the Lord, because uh, at equals rt which means a r t is i sascales. I got really nervous starting this problem out, but we know that this is isosceles. We just have to make sure that our math proves it. And that's what we did. And so we wasted our time doing ARs, but aren't ARs a waste of time anyway? Oops, political comment. Don't like and subscribe, I guess. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Prove A, B, C, D is an isosceles trapezoid. In order for something to be an isosceles trapezoid, you need to show two things. You need to show that these two sides are parallel, and you need to show that these two sides are congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the slope of BC and the slope of AD and show that they're the same. Then I'm going to show the distance of BA and the distance of CD and prove that they're the same. Therefore, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Let's write out a few friendly reminders. The slope formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's going to come in handy for the whole parallel thing. The distance formula is a big square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Okay, so let's start out by doing the whole parallel thing. And I'm going to say that I need to show that BC is parallel to AD. So let's say the slope of BC, I'm going to use the slope formula. Let's let this be x sub 1, y sub 1. Let's let this be x sub 2, y sub 2. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 is c minus c. I think I can handle that. Uh, then I have x sub 2 minus x sub 1 is going to be b minus negative b. 
double negative makes it positive. 0 over 2b is just 0. Makes sense because that looked flat to me. Now let's find this slope of AD. A similar thing should happen. If I call u x sub 2 y sub 2 and a x sub 1 y sub 1, then I'm going to do 0 minus 0, another toughie, over a minus negative a. Oh, look, a double negative. Let's make it a positive. 0 minus 0 is 0 over 2a is 0 again. So, since the slopes are the same, I have now proven that BC is parallel to AD. Okay? So that was thing number one. Thing number two is I need to show that these two guys are equal in distance. So I'm going to use the distance formula to show that AB or BA is equal to CD, compact disc, those of you 90s kids. D is equal, and let's do, let's rewrite it out so that I'm a little bit more specific. Let's start out with BA and show that the distance of BA is a big square root of, let's let you be my twos and you be my ones. So negative B minus negative A squared, negative B minus negative A squared uh, plus C minus zero squared. Double negative makes a positive. Now, since space is an issue and time is money, okay, uh, I'm going to use the idea of perfect square trinomials for this one, and I'm going to make sure that I understand that this becomes b squared minus 2ab plus a squared, and u are going to be c minus 0, which is just c, so plus c squared. If you're like, whoa, 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 what did he just do there? perfect square trinomials. I'm not going to go any further than that because I know that when I do CD that it's going to end up looking like the same exact thing underneath the square root. So what's the point of trying to clean it up? Okay, what's the point of trying to like combine like terms and simplify it? You probably can anyway. Uh, let's keep that red going. CD, the distance for that, big square root again. I'm going to let you be my twos, let you be my ones. That is going to be C minus zero squared. Oh, I did it backwards, didn't I? doesn't really matter. Plus B minus A squared. C minus 0 squared is C squared, so there's my C squared. B minus A squared using um, perfect square trinomials is going to be B squared minus 2AB plus A squared. So there it is, the same exact thing. So, and let's get rid of these rules because I won't need them anymore, even though they look so darling. I just showed that BA and CD are the same. So let me say that. So since BC is uh, par or, yeah, parallel to AD, and since BA is equal to CD, that tells me that ABCD is an isoscel isoscelles trap. E zoid. All right, so that's that's coordinate geometry. You're not setting up a two column proof. All right, you're just showing the math that you need to show to prove that these guys are exactly what they say they are. Fun.